So here we are again. Whoop. All right. So looks like we're on to the capacitors. Now there it goes. So changing the transistor that is a power regulator, power supply transistor didn't do it. You can hear it now. Those are the relays just shorting out. So now we're going to go after the well, just like that it's stabilized by itself again. The only possible thing I can think about is that these capacitors have humidity in them or are burned out somehow. But they definitely are running hot. Hundred and forty degrees now. There's just no reason for that. The reason I'm going at this one thing at a time and using the heat sinks is that I believe that this thing, even with all new parts, gets too hot in the box. So that's why I'm putting a heat sink here and I'm going to change this resistor and stand it up away from these little capacitors and I'm going to replace the capacitors with the assumption that they are worn out and prone to overheating and breaking down, which it's doing right now. Okay, I've been working on the switching problem with uh, Bugera 333 XL, an older one, and it was switching channels like mad all by itself. Um, my friend uh, had replaced the foot switch and was told by somebody it was a foot switch. And then I went online and of course I, I got into all the different discussions there about what it could possibly be. And some people were re-engineering boards and things like that. And I found that the BDM board was central to all the switching so I assumed that the BDM board was part of the cause and when I started to work on the BDM board I took a temperature probe and all the capacitors a couple of them were running much hotter than they than I thought they should run so I replaced the capacitors and they do run much cooler they were on their way out it seemed like the machine would start off working really well and then after it got warmed up, it would start switching all by itself, sometimes very rapidly. So I rebuilt the BDM board, replaced all the capacitors. I used better voltage value capacitors, and I didn't like the way that the voltage regulator itself was mounted. So I went ahead and put, put the voltage regulator up on the board right here, and I put some heat sinks on it. And then there's a drop down resistor here that was a standard little resistor and I replaced it with a ceramic resistor of twice the value and then I took all the little capacitors that I was suspecting might be a problem and when I replaced them I raised them up off the board. It dropped the temperature of the board at room temperature upside down like this. It dropped the temperature by almost 30 degrees. So, so the caps were on the way out, but that BDM board was not the cause. It did seem like it made the cause worse of this switching, 
and once I re rebuilt this board it got a bit better but sure enough if you left it on then instead of just 20 minutes you had to leave it on for several hours and then it would start switching again all by itself so replacing the caps on this if you've had your for a while is a good thing to do because they seem to be running hot meaning that they're you know shorting out a bit inside but that's not what caused the switching problem the switching problem was strictly one switch on this and what it was was in this case it was the FX loop switch right there and what that switch was doing was shorting out and and just driving the machine crazy the way these switches work on this let's look over here at the crunch switch because what I finally did to make it stop is I pushed the switch in and I put a a dab of silicon right on the switch itself so that it no longer worked I pushed it in a bit okay let's look at how this switch works here as soon as you start to touch it it switches it doesn't have to go all the way down or all the way in you just have to breathe on them see how much it can go in yet watch again triggered already so they must activate on the side of the switch somehow so you don't have to hardly move the switch at all to make it go well you know what once the switch gets a little bit tired a little bit the spring gets a little bit weak they will activate hear it see it you didn't have to go all the way down it's not connecting at the bottom like the switch on the foot switch does this is connecting as soon as you start to move it well if if you notice this one comes out much farther than this one does and they're the same switch Which tells me that the spring in this one, or the switch itself, I don't know, is weaker. It's been used more. And the switches themselves will make the connections by themselves. But they don't make a good connection. So then it just starts switching back and forth and going over to a default mode. The default mode is actually part of the BDM board which I went ahead and worked on anyhow in case that was part of this problem and then finally I took apart that that actually cured everything the machine's been running stable for a couple of days now finally and this is uh, all as soon as I went ahead and just silicon that one switch and basically disabled it so it couldn't move anymore it does still switch from the foot pedal without any problem but then as I started playing with the foot pedal all these were working good but the FX loop likes to act up and that's a bad switch in there too it's worn out it doesn't pop all the way back up like it should and this is the same kind of switch there's nothing to the FX pedal no reason to buy one the little switches are available everywhere they're the most common switch they're used in microwaves dishwashers they're just a little a little momentary switch that actually activates at the bottom you have to push everything all the way down they're little tiny switches they're extensively used and they're the same switch for everything.
the only thing is this one's a little bit worn out they wear out on the front of your microwave they wear out on your dishwasher they wear out on your on a copy machine same switch so this one here needs a new switch to become real reliable and it just so happens that I guess the FX loop on this machine was used more than everything else so this switch is worn and the other FX switch is absolutely shot and it will act up like mad so that's your solution go for the switches first replace them the one on the on the board here I, I actually don't know about that if you can get it readily because it is a little bit different that it's that they're triggering by breathing on them you don't have to push them all the way down like you do a lot of other switches and that's part of the problem these boards get hot when it's running this this chassis goes up in temperature because it is a tube unit and it makes the switches make their own connections it gets them on a threshold somehow and goes crazy so as soon as that starts you need to replace these switches right in the front and they're right there on the board the light isn't part of the switch the light is a little is a little light underneath the switch that goes up into it so it's just a small small switch right here and it's easy to replace okay the bugera has now been on for two days it's been on the lead channel it has not switched anywhere by itself and what I'm going to show you here is that's the effects loop that was switch that was making so much of a problem for us. That's the one that I went behind the panel and I put some silicon. I pushed it in a bit and held it there with a little clamp while it was out of the case. I just put a little clamp, held it about halfway down and put a drop of silicon in there. What I didn't expect was when the effects loop was siliconed that so far the silicon has remained very flexible and the only thing that it did was it slowed down how this switch works so now instead of being real fast you push on it you push on it slowly and it comes back out the switch is working it's no longer shorting out but it's really hard to uh, not hard but you can hear it switch and you can hear it switch back I'm gonna bring the uh, volume up a little bit more so you can hear the switch go So now it's sluggish and doesn't pop all the way out. And the silicon that I used didn't dry. It, it got in there and it was like rubber. And it was Quick Seal Ultra from Home Depot. And so far it's just made like a little piece of almost like a rubber in there. And it slowed the action of the switch down and didn't allow it. I put it between the actuator on the inside so that I made like a a little gob of of this stuff so that the switch couldn't come all the way out any longer and that seemed to have cured this for now the lead channel switch was also a problem what I ended up doing with this one this thing would get hot and then the lead channel wouldn't work anymore. The, the case itself would get hot. With the lead channel switch, I just resoldered the switch. And here after a number of days, this switch is working perfect. Hasn't given me any more problems at all. So it's switching back and forth. And before, if you went over to that switch, you'd be push, it would work when the, when the machine was cold. And then after the machine was on for 20 or 30 minutes, especially in a hot environment, it would start becoming intermittent to where you would push it a few times and it would 
work and then it would stop working entirely. And with that one, I just re-soldered the switch in the back and that took care of it. Now to me, these switches all seem to be doing the same kind of switching. So I believe that this one, the lead, the crunch, the clean over on the right. I don't know if you can see that on the right or not. Over there, there's the clean and the effects switch are the same. Let's come out a bit. All right, so these are working real fast. Bang and bang. The lead is working great. And then over here was the problem switch, which I put the silicon on, and it's working great. Now, the thing acted like it was a bad foot switch, and a couple of technicians that this was taken to uh, said the sw foot switch is no good and we're going to go into the foot switch at the end of this video anyhow but the real problem even though it looked like the foot switch was was acting up the same problem existed when you unplug this the foot switch so while the foot switch had a, uh, also had a bad switch in it it was an easy switch to repair So let's address the FX switch first. I've got the silicon. I'm going to replace that switch. However, the switch takes about two months to get from Bugera. You can order it from fullcompass.com. It's the FX loop boost switch for the 333XL. The part number is Y77-03822. Dash zero two seven seven nine. It's called the switch radial two P two T non locking for the three 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 XL. It's a dollar fifty nine cents. Of course, it's driven us crazy for two months, and you have to wait two months to get the switch. But the right way to do this is not to use the silicon and slow the switch down so it quits vibrating and making the unit go nuts. The right way is to replace it. And by the time I replace this, I was able to replace that one without pulling the board, just because it was once you got the inside of the unit out, uh, you could just turn it upside down and work on that switch. But with the idea that the lead switch was also giving a little bit of problem, and the thing that I've noticed about these switches is some of them actually pop out farther than others. I do think that this this switch is really the same for all of them. They're different colored switches but the light is a separate little LED that shines into the switch itself so the light doesn't come with it. I think they've used four of the same switches. I'm not a hundred percent sure. The only part number I've talked to them about so far is is the one for the FX for the FX and boost but I think they're all the same. They certainly look like they fit in the case the same way. For that you'd want to pull the whole front panel apart and just replace all the switches. I'd certainly do it on one of these considering how crazy these switches are. Now the other thing that bothers me about this is the fact that this entire case that this is in has no ventilation. So all the components underneath in the board run hot. I did something about it because I really didn't like the idea that the one component was running hot, the BDM board. But I would put a small fan in there and, and find a little 12 volt source inside the box somewhere, tap into it, and use a, the tiniest, tiny, small fans you can buy them and I'm going to show you where I think would be an easy install. If it would, this is not my unit, 
So I'm not going to do this without talking to my friend first, but there's plenty of room. And I would put the fan inside of the case and let it suck some air in and then open up a couple of exits inside that case and let it blow the hot air from underneath back out. Now if this was my unit again, where I would go is right where those big transformers are, there are wires that go down from the transformer into the box and those wires have a nice size rubber grommet. It's, it's huge around the wires and there's only two wires and then there's about a half inch around it that's all rubber grommet. It makes the case look real clean inside but if it was my unit I would take those rubber grommets out minimally and then if I was worried I'd find some way to stabilize those wires a little bit but even those wires are well insulated and I'd leave them just run through those holes and take that grommet out so that some air gets in here and if it was really my unit not only would I do that but I would take a small fan and mount it inside under one of the rubber grommet holes and then open up the other rubber grommets that are in the, the very top side of the inside of this case and get them out of there and let that case breathe. But that's entirely up to you. I haven't thought about how I would stabilize the little wires to make sure they don't rub any part of the metal chassis. But you don't need an inch around each, each wire with the rubber grommet. What you really need more than anything is some cooling inside of this box. Those tubes get hot. You know, I can understand that you wouldn't have these problems with a lot of Bugueras in Japan or China or Ohio. But I've lost good equipment here in Florida because some of the smaller venues, the stages are extremely hot. I actually had an organ player who bought a brand new amp and it lasted 15 minutes on stage and it burned up. That same night, my really nice old crown amp also smoked on stage. The stage was that hot, both units, new and old, burned up. The new one, of course, was a, a, a little 6 pound, 600 pound, 600 watt, but 6 pound amplifier that he was raving about how much power it had for how small and light it was. Well, it didn't hold up at all. And to have something that is this heavy with no ventilation inside the case, no fan, blowing across those components just doesn't make any sense, especially if you really want to use it for any length of time. And while we're at it, we're going to take a look next at the foot switch. And this foot switch is plugged in right now. And I'm going to take it apart for you in a second. It was really easy. This FX loop, again, it was the same switch that was a problem on the unit in the front. And it was worn out on the, on the foot pedal as well. You know, in America, we tend to slam doors and we tend to stomp on these boxes. So you can either buy a box, which costs you a whole lot of money, or you can repair this, the little tiny switch that's inside of it. This box is working perfect, and I'm, I'm still burning the whole unit in. I'm going to unplug just this box because I don't want to shut my unit off. It's been on for two days. I want to make sure that it doesn't do any of that crazy switching any longer. And I'm going to suggest to the customer that we go ahead and purchase, uh, it's not even a customer, it's a friend, um, that we, we purchase some switches for the front of the Bugera and replace them because I think this thing's going to be stable. Okay, this is the foot switch. It has six little screws in it that I just loosened. I've unplugged it. And it just comes apart like that. There is nothing to this switch. Alright, the actuator is here. It pushes on a little switch that's here, 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 and here. There's only 
five wires, four of them are carrying some type of signal, and one of them is either ground or hot. There's one transistor, and there's four little switches. I'm going to go ahead and take these apart and show you the switches. They are the little momentary switches. They're not momentary, they're just, yeah, they are. Okay, again, there's only, there's six screws. There's one silver one that goes on the ground over here. You don't have to do undo the wires. You can work on this one just real quick like this. You don't have to buy a whole switch thing. The switches cost about two dollars each. Actually, you know, if you buy them on the internet, they're twenty cents each. But there's, like I say, there's nothing to this board. There's the LEDs right there, and there's these little tiny button switches right here. And that's all there is to it. Okay, well, I don't know if this is going to focus, but it was two switches in a package here. It's called a tactile switch, single pole, single throw, SPST. Uh, off and on six by six millimeters and it was 3.8 millimeters high 50 milliamps 12 volts DC 100 GF operating force so they're very standard they're used in everything out there washing machines television boards you can find them everywhere the only problem I had was my replacement switch the little button was too high so when you put the whole thing back together it was always pushed and it was always on and what I ended up doing and I don't know if this thing will focus automatically on this or not or how close in it'll focus but this little actuator was almost a half inch tall so I took my soldering gun and I just heated up the top of that plastic and very slowly scraped it down until it was the size that I wanted and until it would go off and on. And then when I went to solder it, I made a mistake and I managed to drop a drop of solder between this terminal and this ground and the whole switch thing stopped working and all the switches quit. So you got to be really careful. This terminal actually here on that switch when you push it through is within a fingernail of this ground screw and it will short out real easily. So you push, you take your one switch out. When you're working on any of these boards you really want to a small you don't want one of these great big soldering guns because what what will happen is you heat up the trace which is metal underneath there and it ruins the board and then you're buying a new board so you don't use a lot of heat just enough to melt it and I use this no clean wick that's an NTE part you put that on it and you heat it up and it'll suck all the solder right into the wick and make it much easier you still might have to heat up the little pins a little bit and then push the old switch out put the new switch in and if the actuator is too long melt the little the little top of the button down when you put it back together you have uh, spacers there's four spacers here. Be careful you don't lose them. They go under the screws. So you start off 
really with just one spacer. Make sure that when you've got it tied down that the, the switch actually works for you, that if you had to melt one down a little bit to get it to the right size. What you do is you get your little LEDs back in the hole first, get them settled in gently, they go down in a hole. Okay, you see how the whole thing just fell in place there. And then you start off by putting your spacer back in. After you replace your little button, this one here was the FX and it was worn out. And then this one is the silver one here. They use that for a ground, I guess. There we go. That's one. There are four screws that go into the metal and two of the little screws that you take out have a little different thread on it for the plastic. Those go in this kind of in the center of the board. I put them in here and the other one goes on the other side of the board right here put them in first after I get the little LEDs back in the right spot. I don't tighten them all the way down. And then you can go ahead and just put your spacers in like that. And that's all there is to it. If you do have to melt the top of the actuator down, what you want to look for is when you, number one, you want to make sure that when you push on it, it clicks. But the other thing you want to look for is to make sure that when you push on your foot pedal, it doesn't bend the board when it's all the way down. That's why they used a switch probably with, with very little throw to it so that when you get to the bottom of your throw on the on the pedal that you aren't cracking the board at the same time so make sure that you've got it nicely fitted down in there if you can't find a particular switch with a real tiny actuator on sticking out of the top of it you just melt it down and that's that's it and it worked beautifully okay so we put our little foot switch back together We've got the new little switch underneath the FX. Lead, crunch, clean, and FX is on and off. They're momentary switches. Again, single pull, single throw, off when it's open and on when you push it down. PCM, all right, it's a six by six millimeter by 3.8 millimeter high. 50 milliamps, 12 volts, 100 GF operating force. That's, I guess that, I don't know what a GF is, but it's very little. And my suggestion is don't do like I saw my guitar players doing in my own band years ago. They just slam these switches. When you see how small the switch is, you will understand not to slam it with your feet.